What's going on to all my Star Wars, Boba Fett, Mandalorian, Grogu fans out there? And what's going on? Elliot here from Movie Files. Really excited to be here with you all because this is honestly the first time I've talked about Boba Fett on camera uh, for the entire season. So we will be talking about overall thoughts of the season, obviously this seventh chapter, the future of this show, the obviously the future of the Star Wars TV shows. we got the announcement of Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, but I won't be chatting by myself. Obviously, the people in the chat will be having some great conversations, but I have two special guests that I'm going to bring in here just in a little bit but before we dive into this book of boba fett chapter seven breakdown spoiler discussion and obviously the season overall make sure you guys are liking the video sharing the video to all the star wars fans you know out there and definitely leave your thoughts in the comments how did you all feel about this series how did you feel about this chapter what were some of your favorite moments favorite characters and do you want to see more from boba fett a season two or him popping up in the mandalorian season three since he is you know officially you know running tatooine and all that stuff so let us know your thoughts on that in the comments and of course if you're watching this the replay if you can do the same it'll be really greatly appreciated so Waiting on one of our special guests, but one of them is already here. We were chopping up in the back room, and he is here. Uh, he was just here the other day, you know. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's funny uh, when I'll be able to collaborate with people so many times. It's just like you know, they I make room, you know, make a make a bedroom for him, right? And he's been on the channel two days uh, or two uh, this whole twice this week, and been on the channel before, and and, and ha hoping to have him on more and more. We talked, you know, of Euphoria, and now we're talking Star Wars, and and this just kind of speaks to all the stuff he's able to to cover and speak so highly on. I'm talking about the one and only Big Dog. What's going on, Yo, man? What's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, it's Star Wars, man. I'm doing good. You know, we got a we got an episode to talk about, big dog. This chapter seven of Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah, we got an episode. Yeah. We got an episode, man. <laughs> 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 Big dog, man. It has been a uh, a really interesting show to watch, to digest. We're going to get into your thoughts about the character, what you even excited for. But before we do so, man, why don't you let the fine folks at home know who you are, what you're about, and when they can find you, man? Uh, what's going on, everybody? Uh, obviously, every, every let's know. Name's Big Dog. Uh, you can find me on all social media platforms at One Take Big Dog. Uh, I mainly do movie reviews, TV reviews, uh, anime. I'm doing a lot of uh, well, like moving, moving news as well. Uh, also, follow me on TikTok, where I just mainly where you get a lot of my anime content and uh, a lot of my other stuff. So uh, I'm just I'm just here to make people laugh and like, enjoy this thing we call life, people. And from anime to shows like this to Euphoria, he covers it all, man. And, and Big Dog, when it comes to just content-wise, what, what have you been watching lately, man? What's been some stuff that's been really catching your eye besides the book of Boba Fett? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, obviously, Euphoria, uh, yes, Peacemaker. Uh, like I said, I, I still have to shoot my review for All of Us Are Dead. Uh, you also told me to watch Train to Busan. I'm probably going to get that review up this week. It's a must, man. Um, I started Raising Dion. Um, I got a couple other things I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to down the pipeline. I just mm -hmm. watched the trailer for the new season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Uh, I got to get into that. that, man. I've heard that show is a is incredible, man. I've heard it is so good. I am hey, so Rachel, behind on that. Rachel, I, I say this, man. Rachel yeah. Brosnahan. That's the lead, right, of the show? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Her performance in that show is probably better than 90% of any other performance I've ever seen, movie or television. I, wow. So hey, man. I, I mean, I know she's always nominated to come Emmy season. That show's always getting nominations. She's always been brought up. I've only seen her like in one other project. She's great, but I've heard yeah. she is just yeah. knocks it's, it out of the park. She, she, she's incredible in it. So, yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. It comes out, uh, I want to say the 18th. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, that's one of my shows. I've been looking, I've been thinking it's been on high age for like, Two years, yeah, like, with you know, that, pandemic yeah. pushed a lot of stuff back, but I'm, I'm super excited to talk about that. Yeah, man, and then, and speaking of a couple of weeks, man, we got Uncharted. Are you are you looking forward to that, oh, man? Yeah. Are you a Nathan Drake uh, fan? Are you looking for uh, Spider Man as Nathan Drake? Yeah, I've never played the game. Oh, that's that's I've my favorite franchise, game. video game franchise, bro. I love those games. Yeah, but like, I'm a fan of you know, obviously Tom Holland, but I'm yeah. really a big fan of Mark Wahlberg as well. Yeah, yeah. So those two just seem like they're gonna have great chemistry on screen together, I, I, I and so. I like action adventure. Yeah. Thing. Kind of Indiana Jones, but I, I hope it's good, man. Because like I said, I, that is my favorite video game franchise of all time, and I'm really a little bit nervous. I'm not gonna lie, but uh, I'm 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 hoping for the best. It is Sony, and we know Sony's kind of hit or miss sometimes with their action yeah. movies, but I'm hoping for the best. But there is a movie I want to kind of talk to you about before we get our other guests who we're waiting for in the back uh, coming pretty soon. 
the Batman. They mm. dropped they dropped the tickets yesterday, man. And and they have a, a, a fan screening on the first of March. Were you able to capture those tickets, big dog? I were not, I was not. Yeah, I, I same here. Not, I missed man. out on it too, man. But I know they were sold out like the when I was looking at them late last night. But are you are you excited for the Batman, uh, man? I, I am. Yeah. Man, when I tell you that I'm like Batman's my favorite superhero. Same, okay? same man. And I have as much as I love like some well, I think I love most of the versions of, of the, the live action Batman recently, except for the one on uh Titans. It's, Terrible. Yeah, I yeah. yeah, the older version, right? Yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he's god awful. But <laughs> I love the character so much, so I'm, I'm I'm still waiting to see that live action version that that, that like sticks with me. That I'm like, that's my Batman. I, yeah. I like Christian Bale. I like Ben Affleck. But I need somebody to be able to portray Batman mm -hmm. as well as Bruce, Bruce. Wayne. Yeah, and the Robert Pattinson Bruce Wayne doesn't. <clears throat> It, it, emo dark cold yes, kind of like, yeah man. there's we'll a see, difference man. between bruce wayne and batman i don't want to see them being the same person two of the so same I'm, person yeah. yeah no i hear you man i mean everything that's been coming out so far i mean we got a three-hour film coming up seven you know kind of mixed with the detective batman everything's looking good but i'm right there with you as far as that bruce wayne aspect can can robert pull it off which i think he can but so far the trailers have just seem to make him seem like it's two of the same characters yeah, so yeah It'll be interesting, man. It'll be interesting, no doubt. But as we get into this discussion, our second special guest is this guy here. It's been a minute since I've seen him, but we, we've covered this. We Last time I think we were talking Star Wars was Mandalorian Season 2, and he just does such a great job on this platform, diving deep into some of your favorite movies and shows and just having a building his own empire, man. And I'm so glad to have him on and talking Star Wars with him. I'm talking about the one and only Griffin from Film Speak. What's going on, man? Hey man, how's it going? Yeah, it's a long time no see, awesome, bro. bro. I know, man. Yeah. It's been a hot sec. I'm I'm glad to be on here. Happy to be talking uh, Boba Fett and all this uh, madness that went down. But yeah, yeah man, madness. I'm, uh, I'm ready to get into this. Let's do it. Don't no doubt, Griff. Hey, if you want to do me a favor, man, why don't you let the people, which they should know who you are, but if they're not too familiar with you, Griff, why don't you let them know who you are? Yeah, so uh, you can uh, find me over at the Film Speak channel. We do primarily video essays over there on just like, you know, the latest in pop culture and entertainment and stuff like that. Uh, I, I should actually have a video on the book of Boba Fett coming out, you know, in the next week or so. So you'll get my full in-depth thoughts uh, there as well. But you'll probably get a lot of them uh, here, too. So, uh, yeah, get ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> In the, the, one of the first things I wanted to kind of talk about was just kind of expectations for this show, which I guess we can kind of get that conversation going now, starting with, you know, with you, Big Dog. Were you a fan of Boba Fett? And when you heard they were making a series of this, excitement level, where was it at, man? Oh, man. Uh, I have to say, I was not really a fan of Boba Fett from the original trilogy. I never understood what people saw in him. I said he looked cool. I'm like, this guy really didn't do too much of anything. And then we see him in The Mandalorian, and, bro, he, he comes through, still the show. I'm just like, okay, okay, this is the Boba Fett that I guess everybody else saw but right. didn't actually see. So I'm like, yeah, this, this is going to be great. So then we get his own series. I'm like, okay, this should, this should be good. It was, <laughs> it was okay. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was a show. It was a show. <laughs> it was a show. It was yeah, a yeah, show. Yeah. Same with you, Griff, in regards to just fandom. Uh, were you excited for it? Again, we, we were on your channel talking about Man Lauren season two. Robert Rodriguez comes in there, brings in Boba Fett. He has a staff. He's taking people out left and right. Gets yeah, the announcement yeah, yeah. on the show. Were you excited for it? And then obviously we'll talk about what we end up getting with this show. Right. Uh, no, I was not excited for the show. I was just kind of <laughs> like, oh, Boba Fett, that's really boring and uninteresting. I really couldn't care less. I actually, I didn't really care for the, for how they brought him back in um, uh, Mandalorian Season 2. That that yeah. episode that Robert Rodriguez directed was probably my least favorite episode of that season. It just felt like a glorified fan film, and we get a lot of that in uh, this, this series. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. But um, you know, I don't know. Maybe Robert Rodriguez was a great producer for this, but I, I don't think they should have had him direct nearly as many episodes as as he did. I just don't think he blends well with Star Wars. Um, for whatever reason, like I, I don't know. I thought he might, but I, I guess it just wasn't 
wasn't an ideal uh, fit. But as yeah. for, yeah, going into this, no, was not excited for it at all. Really had no intention uh, of watching it, to be honest with you. And then I watched like the first episode and I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting enough. The second yeah. one really hooked me because I thought like the the entire just like point of the show clicked for me and it was carrying mm -hmm. on a lot of those threads that they had uh, started with Boba in the the Clone Wars you know a lot of stuff about him being this uh, child without a family without a, a clan or a community and, right. I, and just like seeing that whole you know how this this native group brought him in and trot and, and taught him tradition uh, I don't know it was just kind of like a refreshing look at like how tradition can benefit certain individuals because you know with mandalorian and stuff like that it's it's kind of like breaking down tradition and how yeah. it's sort of like holding him back yeah. so loved that loved everything about the first four episodes to be honest with you i was mm. i was quite surprised and i was like hell man this might be my favorite piece of star wars in, in quite some time and okay, then we okay and then we get like <clears throat> the the two random mandalorian season three episodes <laughs> and the whole thing falls apart for me because just as Boba's arc is starting to achieve liftoff, uh, they like kind of cut him off at the knees and they just focus on n uh, legacy characters or, or characters from the Mandalorian. And I'm just sort of yeah. like, this is just an absolute mess. And the finale is that and then some. So, uh, similar sentiments from you guys in regards to anticipation level. I personally never kind of understood the the hype level for the character, and I and I know too a lot of people with the. Uh, some of the excitement for Boba Fett maybe comes from Clone Wars and some of the yeah. the books and all that. And I get all that. But as far as live action movies go, I'm like, yeah, he's like uh, Big Dogs. He's a cool looking character, but do we need a, a, a whole show on him? So again, yeah. Griff, when we saw him in, in season two, you know, I actually thought, I thought it was pretty cool to kind of see him come in, especially the way he was just, you know, using all this. We've never really, I've never seen him, you know, again, not seeing Clone Wars. I've never seen Boba Fett in that light, just taking out all the stormtroopers right. and using his missile. That stuff was like really cool to me. So going into this show, as you mentioned, these first four episodes, there was some stuff I liked. Some stuff I didn't really care for too often, especially now looking back at how things ended, the payoff on some of those, you know, revelations that we got, and especially with the, the Tuscans. I don't know. It was just kind of, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. Yeah. But yeah, I'm actually was a fan of five and six because it brought a little bit of life to the series. That this was kind of <laughs> a little bit lacking for me, but we'll, we'll get into that here in a little bit. But before we break down just our overall thoughts of the season, we do have this seventh chapter to kind of talk about here, which just going into it, starting with you, Big Dog, before we break it all down. Overall, were you satisfied with this finale? Were you a bit let down? And after this finale, do, do you want more of Boba Fett and particularly maybe a season two? I'm gonna be honest, man. I, I I want I was I was whammed. I guess that's probably the best <laughs> way to describe it. I was just I was whammed. Like it didn't do anything crazy for me. It didn't have me like, oh man, I can't wait to see the next thing Boba Fett's gonna do. I just kind of like this was just average, you know. I, I I I'm I I have to say I'm a I'm a bit disappointed to 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 be honest. Yeah, disappointed definitely is a word that comes to mind for me. And Griff, I saw your tweet earlier in regards to a, another word was underwhelming and just kind of anticlimactic and everything kind of felt a little bit rushed. Yeah. Did you want to elaborate on any more of those comments, just your overall thoughts of this finale? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it really, th this reminded me a lot of the WandaVision finale where it was just like they had entirely too much that they needed to wrap up in one final episode and they yeah. spent, they, they did not spend their time wisely and they were just... You know, I, I don't know, like when you take two episodes as a detour away from the central narrative, even though they sort of like tangentially do tie in and engage with that conversation that's, you know, going on with Boba's story, I just think mm -hmm. that you're you're losing the momentum that you've been building up for the previous four episodes. And so like that stuff with like Boba and Cad Bane, like it's great on on pay on the paper, right? Like in in theory, that should be a really compelling uh, confrontation. But it's just so, you know, some of this comes down to the filmmaking aspect, but then also just an execution and the fact that they have to do that. They have to bring in Grogu and Din, yeah. and then like bring in the the townspeople, and like Boba's got to ride the Rancor and all this. Stuff. And so it's just like you don't. There's not enough time for those moments uh the the emotional moments to resonate 
yeah, uh, and, if and any you know, emotional moments at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, in, like again, in theory, the stuff between him and Cad Bane is incredible because like Cad is this m reflection of all of the negative things that Boba is, and you're and him being a former mentor who's kind of took advantage of him after the death of Django, and it's just like th there's so much there. It's like why did you not introduce Cad Bane earlier on in the series so that we have a clear antagonist, a clear <laughs> you know, a confrontation that needs to go yeah. down between Boba and all this, and then obviously learning what we, we learned from him with the Tuscans. It's just sort of like what... The, their their level of priorities here was way out of all whack. over the place. Yeah, yeah, it was all over the place. Yeah, it's it's called the Book of Boba Fett, but it felt more like a just a collage of just randomness of Star yeah. Wars. You know, fan service with Luke Skywalker, Grogu coming back from the Mandalorian, trying yeah. to give you some Boba Fett context again. They kept kept giving us these flashbacks of him as a young kid from the prequels, and we never really like. What was I guess what where yeah, was that leading I, I, to? I, I in, in defense of those flashbacks with him yeah. to the prequels, I, I think it just sort of like doubled down on his fear of abandonment and isolation. Like that 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 like I kinda got what they were doing with that, but like yeah. again, those first four episodes, really interesting deconstruction of the character of Boba Fett, especially like from what we're expecting, right? We're expecting yeah. the super badass bounty hunter who's gonna just like, you know, shoot shit up and whatnot. But that that's not who he really is, especially once if you've watched Clone Wars and a lot of that yeah. stuff. There's there's a lot more going on uh, there with him, and I'm glad that they took that route and actually did something interesting with him instead of him yeah. instead of just playing into sort of like the iconography of the character. So, I I just you know they didn't continue that. That was the problem. <laughs> Big Dog, a question for you, because I, I haven't seen Clone Wars. So, again, I, I'm not too familiar with uh, – I've heard of Cat Bane. I've heard of this rivalry, rivalry between the two and kind of a mentorship that they had. But I wasn't too familiar with that, you know, that kind of context. Were you a fan of uh, Clone Wars, Big Dog, or were you familiar with that kind of uh, setup that they had or, or introduced in this, uh, this show? Yeah, see, that's, that's one of the things I was actually about to say. I'm like, as somebody who didn't – I didn't watch Clone Wars either. Mm -hmm. So I knew so this nothing of – yeah, I knew yeah. nothing about Cat Bane. I knew nothing about the history. I had no idea he was a mentor or anything. Yeah. And I don't think you should automatically assume that everybody has, has yeah. saw that. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. So so the fact that like they have I was thinking, I'm like, oh, they have they, these are the two who have a show. I'm like, I don't know anything yeah. about <laughs> their relationship. Yeah, man. I yeah. just saw this guy show up at the end last, of last week. <laughs> Yeah. No, th this is th this is such a good point because this is exactly the issue that I had with it. It's like even as someone who watched that series and was familiar with that dynamic in live action, it, 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 they did nothing to like explore that re relationship. And so like <clears throat> even as someone who's seen that series, Cad Bane comes in at the end and then he's just gone. It's just sort of like, OK, what the hell was that about? It yeah. was just like some blanket bait and switch fan service. Like it's just it was really, really weird. And then. That was actually another. I'm glad you mentioned that you hadn't watched the series because, like, what if you came into this show just as a fan of the Star Wars films and just as someone who knows who Boba That's Fett me. is? Yeah, and you're and, and you're just watching this and you're just yep. like, what the fuck is going on? Yep. That's how I was last week, and 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 this even goes to the conversation of Ahsoka last or whenever uh, season two of uh, uh, um, yeah. you know Mando was. It was like, oh, I've heard of this character. She's cool. They didn't really like they didn't really establish like where she's from and all this stuff. Obviously she's going to have her own spinoff series, but you know, that to me was handled just a little bit more gracefully than this kind of thrown in uh cat Bane. And, and then we assume he's dead. We'll get to that a little bit later, but I think there was a reason why they lingered on the body a little bit longer than when they should. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll get into all that stuff in regards to, again, the, the fan service and tying lore in from maybe for people like me and Big Dog that haven't really dove into that aspect of Star Wars. And if it's something that is a, a detriment to the future of Star Wars, is it something to maybe do the Marvel approach? Hey, here's a character that was introduced in this show. Go watch this movie to understand the context. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. But let's let's dive into this seventh episode, which was titled In the, the Name of Honor. We, we open up with this kind of dialogue here, uh, Griff and Big Dog, with them just obviously going to the sanctuary. Obviously, we know what happened last week, which, by the way, that um, uh, the the character who was running the the sanctuary, I, I, Jennifer Bills, uh, is that her name from uh, 
the dance movie in the 80s. I can't think of it. I, I was a fan of her character. She was really cool. Was she was really too. interesting. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, she died. But they, they're having this conversation now regarding the spice. And Boba Fett doesn't want the, the spice to go anywhere. And, and you know, George Lucas, definitely uh, Frank Herbert's Dune is, is all in this series. Uh, with uh, <laughs> yeah, Tatooine is essentially a, a rackus. Uh, but we, we have this conversation here of getting the spice out. And these mods, Griff, man, I don't know how you feel. I know they were, you know, you say you were a fan mm. of the fourth episodes, and I know a lot of people quoted them as Power Rangers, but the mods come up with the idea of, you know, sticking at base and and, and, and saving and keeping the people Tatooine safe, which they're just giving, again, like, Boba Fett just takes orders versus giving orders and like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll go that route. Your thoughts, Griff, on how we kind of open up the, the, the war at hand with uh, Boba Fett versus the, yeah. uh, the syndicate? So, like, for the first quarter of this whole episode, like, probably right up until, like, the title card, I was like, oh, okay, they, they might be able to pull this off somehow. Like, th this actually could be really entertaining, especially if the action is done well, which we'll, we'll get into a little bit later on. But as for this specific thing, um, yeah, I mean, I, I liked seeing, like, all the, the, the uh, you know, muscle, quote-unquote, that, uh, you know, Boba and Fennec had uh, recruited come together in one you know, location to like plan out what they were going to do. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I actually, yeah, I, I didn't hate the, the mod got mod squad or, or, or whatever. I know they, it, they feel a little out of place with like traditional Very Tatooine, so. <laughs> yeah. but I, but I also yeah. think like, that's, that's kind of the point, right? Like there's sort mm -hmm. of like this, this hipster pocket in this town of just like, uh, this sort of like steeped in like century long tradition. And so like, yeah. I, I kind of like got their purpose and like, Boba like taking them in because he understands what it feels like to just sort of be like an orphan or just like he doesn't belong like like yeah. I like all of that uh the the Vespas meh, you know design wise not crazy about it but yeah. whatever um but yeah just as, as for everyone coming in I think it shows that Boba is an effective leader because he takes into account uh, everyone's opinion before going with the logical sort of, you know, plan of attack. Yeah. Uh, he, he's pretty, uh, I think the way Tamora Morrison plays him is very thoughtful and uh, internal for the most part. And then when he does take action, it is very purposeful um, and, and powerful. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just like a like a solid way to sort of like see the two you know obviously we get the this stuff with with boba and his faction and whatever and then we get the stuff with the syndicate and uh cad bane and blah 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 and that that whole yeah. setup there like that that to me that whole pre title card thing yeah. worked pretty well what about you big dog in regards to seeing this plan at hand and you know going into cad bane talking to the syndicates in regards to we we i think we all kind of knew that it wasn't the biker gang that took out the tuscan raiders yeah. and, and even yeah. phoenix yeah. said that the those they stayed there's no way to take them out and i think that wasn't like a huge reveal but it kind of shows as cad bane says oh i didn't know the syndicate was so you know devious or what have you so your thoughts on this intro here and, and i guess just your personal thoughts too on the uh, on the mod crew are you a fan because i i will disagree with you a little bit griffin on that look and design sure. to me and you even touched on it earlier with Robert Rodriguez, his mixture of tone and style is Alita Battle, Battle Angel look to it. Bringing that yeah, into Star fair. Wars yeah. didn't really kind of mesh with me well. But Big Dog, your thought on the, the mods and, and just kind of this intro scene that we get here. Yo, there, there is a lot because I kind of feel like we're going to be going back and forth on, the, on a few different things. Um, one of the things, listen, I didn't mind the mods like when they were introduced. But I think the, the the same issue I have with the mods is probably the same issue I'll probably have with Black, Black Chris and I call them Bebop and Rocksteady, like those two as well. Like, I don't feel like they gave us enough time with those guys. I had to see some camaraderie between them. I yeah. had to see them mm -hmm. connect all together. So when we just get to going and, and they're all like, hey, we have to protect this because of reason, because we were born here, I'm, I'm like, okay. Well, y'all hear that, but I haven't seen that. Okay, no context you, have, or any, you, have yeah, the, yeah. you have the other two just out protecting Black Chris, and we hear about him fighting in the pits. Again, I know nothing of this. I haven't seen this. So I, I don't know what to feel about all this. And a little bit of pushback on, like, Boba being a leader. I understand. You definitely have to take in consideration uh, the people in your crew, and I think that does make for a, a good leadership quality. But yeah. we saw, even with the Tuskens, Boba took like took the lead and like hey i know how to stop this train 
let's go attack them. Mm. I kind of feel like a lot of times Boba would just sit back and he he was too reactionary, which resulted in a few people dying. So like the opening yeah. scene, I, I I I see what they were doing, but yeah. as far as you already don't have the numbers. You have two people one spot. You have one person another spot. And then you have the mods bringing over in a whole other section. I never thought that was a good good idea to begin with. I tell you what, leadership yeah, isn't Boba Fett's uh, thing to me. And to me, Finnick, <laughs> right hand woman, should have been the leader of this the whole yeah. Tatooine yeah. situation, if you ask me. But. Yeah, uh, diving kind of deeper into it as we kind of and Griff, I know we talked about this on Mandalorian with Manto as we see, uh, you know, R two D two. Well, first off, we see, you know, uh, Luke's ship, and I don't know if it was just me, and I don't know if if it would have helped or if it would have uh, been a detriment to the show. But did we want to see Luke come out of the, uh, the oh, ship? Or God, no. Made sense? Oh, oh, no, 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 <laughs> Not a little bit Luke is no, the, no, uh, no, no, they were taking out the absolutely the, uh, not. <laughs> oh, my God. I was actually scared there. I was terrified. I was like, oh, God, you're going to bring Luke into this. He's coming Fuck, to save the day, man. This is. <laughs> uh yeah no so so happy it was just r2 and grogu that was yeah. uh thank god <laughs> big dog uh, did you want to see luke come in there Record I shop. luke ahsoka ownership is it's an easy win right that's that's how it's that a is. minute finale if they would have been there maybe even less yeah I, I i didn't want i actually didn't want to see them in this one as well uh, that's yeah. one of the, i've enjoyed seeing luke but i that, i don't feel like this is this was his place at all. It just yeah, felt it's not his fight. Yeah. fight. yeah, yeah, it's especially ways of the Jedi. I mean, yet there's no dog in this fight at all. Which I guess, kind of bringing that up, uh, Griff, just your thoughts on on last week's cliffhanger, Grogu in his path. Now, is it right. to me, if I'm not mistaken, I remember Filoni and Fa Fabro. The idea I thought was to end Grogu's story in season two. And I don't know if it was pushback from Disney and the, and the higher ups and the sales of Grogu's uh, toys. We got to get Grogu, Grogu back in the mix. I personally would have liked the idea of him being, quote unquote, Luke's first official student, which I guess is now right. not technical as he left his training. But did you want Grogu to do, go down that path of a Jedi or are you OK with this whole idea of him now being a Mandalorian or maybe a Jedi slash Mandalorian come season three of Mando? Yeah, I was I was okay with the decision that Grogu ultimately made. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think it was it was probably it was really easy to to just sort of like bring the character back for like a uh, you know marketing and and merchandise and all that that sort of stuff. Um, and the the relationship between Din and Grogu is really at the heart of the Mandalorian, so that yeah. also makes sense. And I think Grogu is ultimately going to help Din. Uh, find that balance of like tradition and like m making his own choices and stuff like that. Um, what I did like about last week's episode is it sort of was in conversation with the ideas that George Lucas introduced in the prequel trilogy and that Ryan Johnson sort of continued in the last Jedi, this idea that the Jedi are, they're, they're all, they're, they're kind of like, manipulative in their own way by like i yeah. mean the, the episode quite literally ends with them forcing a child to choose between his family and like being a jedi yeah. and we know that you can be both like it, it it's not an if or sort of thing and so yeah. the fact that like luke is still like clinging on to that tradition and that sort of old way of thinking i i I liked that that was sort of in conversation with those two things that we had previously seen. So yeah. the fact that Grogu made the choice to shoot, like to to go with Din and, and all that stuff like that, that makes sense from a character standpoint. Yeah. And then I also I also think throughout the course of this episode, we see instances where Grogu uh, is very empathetic towards people, and like we see yeah. that attachment, you know, whether it's with the Rancor or or whatever. Um, and so again. It, it, it's not traditional Jedi behavior that we're getting from Grogu, and so I'm glad that he made the choice uh, to to be with his his new family and stuff like that. That's a good point. That's a good point. Big Dog, do you feel the same, man, or did you want to potentially see that path of Grogu learning to be a Jedi and taking on you know Yoda's uh, lightsaber, or are you okay with you know him going down the path of Mandalorian and rocking on that Baskar uh, vest that he has now? Yeah, that was my whole hope. Like the moment I saw Luke make him choose, 
I was yeah. just like, yeah, I hope he leaves. I I, 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 I don't like this. <laughs> I, I, I don't like this at all. Because yeah. like, I personally never just like, truly agree with the ways of the Jedi in the first place. Now, granted, I I'm, I'm definitely don't agree with the ways of the Sith. But I'm kind of just like, there's a middle ground somewhere. Mm, yeah. But I'm just like, the way you have to like leave all that. I'm like, for the most part, when y'all do that, it still don't turn out well for y'all either. So, yeah, like an Anakin, for example. Yeah. Yeah. <clears> yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. like, I, I'm, I wasn't a fan of that. So, when he chose to come with Mando, I'm just like, okay, this is this is perfect. I yeah. I personally have like this thing in my head, you know, he going he gonna eventually get that dark saber, you know. <laughs> I, I, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Grogu run, flipping run around. around. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, for a second there, I was thinking when like Din was on the ground, I thought he was gonna like grab the dark saber oh, and like man. attack the. That would have been so badass, but like so just like weirdly out of character. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Hey, I think we might see him with that lightsaber come season three. But quick shout out to uh, the super chat here, showing some support to the channel. Has to eat. Hey, enjoy your meal. Appreciate you stopping by. Come back and watch the replay. But thank you so much for the super chat. But yeah, we'll we'll see. We'll we'll get into that a little bit later in regards to hopes for season three of Mandalorian, which I think Mandalore, uh, you know, Din being the leader of Mandalore is something that we can see and, and and getting more of that story that we got in episode five. But getting back to it here again cool characters on screen right now we got uh cat bane and and uh boba coming face to face again i've heard they have beef uh i i i don't have any context for it but the show at least tries to give us a little bit of it where you know boba's like oh i, I smelled something in the air and they're going back and forth and having this conversation griff and again from your perspective again seeing from clone wars only a half of a second in last week and seeing Cad Bane in this episode, that tension, did you feel it from a fan and knowing that history or was it a little bit off for you? I mean, like, I, I definitely felt it to an extent. Like, I, the, the moments where they were, like, having that back and forth sort of, like, you know, spaghetti western showdown thing, like, that was great. That should have been the fight. Like, I don't even think we needed, like, a full-ass battle or anything. You could have, like, ramped up the tension with just those two, had it more, like, emotionally and character-driven and, and stuff like that, so... Um, especially if you had established Cad Bane earlier, maybe have like an action episode last week, and then this week it's like the the, the climactic like character showdown. Anyways, um, as for like what we got, I mean, I, to an extent, it, it still felt like really just like I. It's the first time these two have seen each other in like thirty plus years or whatever. I I was expecting like a little bit more, especially since. Uh, in, in like a, a a deleted episode of Clone Wars, which I guess is technically now canon, the two of them it have like a like duel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have like a duel together, and like that's how Boba gets the dent in his helmet, mm -hmm. and that's how and like he shoots Cad Bane, and that he gets like this plate in his because, head. Like, and, what is that? <laughs> yeah, like yeah, this, this is, is <laughs> dude. This is all like we, like I, the, it's it's baffling that they expect people to know this, uh, yeah, but yeah. Uh, like it's just you know. I, this it was fine, yeah. you know. I, I I saw what they were trying to do, and I mean it didn't really work. But like it was yeah. also just like cool to see them like throw down like that in a way. And, and from my understanding, Big Dog again from the same boat as you, man. This is my first time being exposed to this version or this character at all in Cat Bane, hearing about him, but actually see him. You know, looks cool, very similar to Boba Fett. From what I understand, he's the world's. I don't know. Everyone's the world's like baddest bounty hunter, but I hear that he's a pretty badass bounty hunter, and we kind of get a hint of that in this show. But did you feel that tension at all, man? Again, not coming from the context of the show, when you see Boba Fett talking to, you know, Cad Bane for the first time in the show, did you feel that tension on the screen? Uh, I think. Uh, well, I think I think the guy who plays Cad Bane does a good job because I think he kind of like gives you his demeanor, his presence. I think that's probably the part that gets over the, the best to me, but. Yeah. As far as like real tension, I'm just like, I, I, this is the guy they hired to kill Boba Fett. That's all I know. I, I, I the pre, they, of course, they allude to some stuff in the past, but like as far as anything deeper than that, I'm just like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't really see it. I don't really see it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and again, who knows? I might do some more research on Cad Bane just to get that context. And and I don't think this is the last time we'll see the character. We'll see what comes of that. But yeah, we'll, we'll get to how they their confrontation ends towards the end of the episode. But we see that the other families, the crime families, lied, which I could have told Boba Fett that. I mean, again, he's yeah, a very... dude, like. <laughs> 
I mean, it's just like, stay at, you, you guys don't have to do anything. You could just stay there. Yeah, my word. Oh, so, you're right. Yeah, for sure. So you just got to have a, yeah, anyways. That was, so Bob, well, he accepts they're, they're, uh, they're going to, you know, uh, hold off, but obviously they don't. We see the betrayal take no. place and the soldiers attack, uh, you know, BK, our, 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 our black Wookiee. We see the mosque getting attacked. We see the two, you know, two soldiers getting pushed off the cliff. And I think I was supposed to feel something, but I'm like, oh. Bye. Bye, guys. See, all, nice dude, see <laughs> all of this goes down to how, well, like, one, the writing, because everything is just compressed into this, like, hour-long episode, but also just, like, the way that it was shot and directed was just, like, so cheap. It was, like, Squad. overly melodramatic. Like, yeah. it, the pacing was super slow. Like, there was no, like, urgency to anything. Yep. Like, Especially when you compare this to like episode five with Bryce Dallas Howard directing, it was like that is the first time this entire season where I was like, "Holy shit, this looks like a movie!" Yep. And then the yes. rest of the t <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, yep. dude, it's like the rest of the time I'm like, "This is like some Power Rangers ripoff." Like, I, it's like two kids in the backyard playing with action figures, which is like cute at first, but then yeah. after a while, you're just like. Yeah, but what why why like why are why? just give it more make it feel more premium i guess especially since people are paying to to watch this on your platform you know exactly man and again it dates back to i love those two lap episodes we got last but like you just said uh griff i would have loved to have had that emotion of seeing you know boba's guards going out and the betrayal it's just like it, it, it fell flat uh big dog your thoughts on this again seeing the the families who uh you know pretty much was smiling in boba fett's face when he said oh yeah yeah we'll uh we'll stay off of uh, off of this war uh your thoughts on the betrayal and did you see it coming a mile away unlike boba fett yeah, because they didn't respect you from the jump. They literally were disrespecting you. You threatened them with the rank. Jabba wouldn't have threatened them. I understand he wants to lead in a different way, but you yeah. also have to realize the people you're dealing with, okay? You have you have to make an example. Like, and he didn't do that. So and and with not doing that, two of his people died. He never com like they never even mourned for him at all. Like, like okay, well, Bebop and Rocksteady gone. Well, yeah. what are we gonna do now? Let's go see what's going on with the. They never. I don't even think they ever brought it back up that those two like uh, just got off. They don't know how they went out. They don't even. To be honest, they have no clarification if they're actually dead at all. So I'm just like, all right, bro, but you you have to like get on it, and and he got betrayed because. Once again, I just don't feel the leadership from yeah. Boba Fett. I, I, he just, he, I, I see why he was a bond hunter. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> empty threats should have been the name uh, of this book, the book of empty threats, because a lot of people did not take him serious, even though he said his name to everyone he met for the first time as like a threatened tactic that didn't work. Uh, and, and <laughs> we'll get to him a little bit later. But after this betrayal, we see at this point, everyone's uh, kind of back against the wall. But Finnick, who again, she she's so great again i wish i don't know if you guys were thinking at one point griff and, and big dog was there a sense of betrayal at some point from you guys that you thought Frenick was just like i am tired of boba fett making these terrible decisions and because my whole thing of the show i thought it was going to kind of dive into the sopranos and people you know betraying each other and, and Finnick taking uh boba out and taking the throne for herself but you know at this point she's coming in and, and saving the the mods but griff did at, at any point in the show was that a storyline that you were looking to see Finnick betraying no, uh, Boba no, no. take over the throne herself? No, because no. I, I, I mean, it goes back to the fact that like Boba's saved her life, and yeah. as opposed to like other people she probably worked for who would have like held that over her head, he was sure. sort of like, "Look, just help me out with a favor, and then you're good to go." And she chose to stay because she yeah. saw what he was capable of, the humanity he had, the you know the potential within him to be a great leader when he eventually gets there, and how he can you know, improve this, uh, the, 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 you know, the planet of Tatooine or whatever, stuff yeah. like that. So like, it, it, yeah, it, had she betrayed him, that would have been really, really weird and out of character for her. Um, but I, I was like, like the stuff we got from her was great. Yeah. Like her helping out her getting like the final kills on the pikes and stuff like that. Just like she showing stuff her done. <laughs> yeah, she gets stuff done. But on the, on the flip side of that, like I, I felt like she was, she was just like a plot device a lot or not a plot device but she like she was just there to sort of like explain the plan a lot of the time and i was just yeah. like okay cool i like i wanted more like character from her 
Yeah. Um, which again, this is what happens when you shaft your two main characters for two Side episodes. For two you're episodes, not, yeah. yeah, you're not afforded that uh, luxury. No, I agree, Big Dog. When we see uh, Finnick come in and, and, and save the the mods and all that, how did you feel about Finnick? Because again, we like Grip said, there's not a lot of like character stuff that we get from her besides being a badass. But how did you feel about the character overall? And, and, and in this moment, her saving the mods and, and again, yo, you have manners. Oh, thank you. All that stuff that we get from Finnick in this episode. Finnick is, is, is constantly being like the best part of something. So I I, I love that her immediately springing into action to save the mod. Uh, like the scene we get with her at the end. But something I want to push back on, though, there was a part of me that thought, like, hey, maybe Finnick is not with Boba. And I think that I was, was, yeah. I hmm. think that was kind of like in the very first episode where mm-hmm. we saw, like, when they was constantly, like, uh, interviewing, well, people bringing like, in, the, in the gifts and, and stuff. Boba and was going get, against the tradition and all yeah, that. Yeah. And she, <clears throat> and she just kept looking at him like, I bro, this you gonna pay for this eventually. And lo and behold, she was right. You yeah. Know? So I, Finnick, she was she was a shining light to me. But at the same time, her and Boba are similar. So even her at the lead spot to be seated in that service, because I kind of feel like those characters are not. It's not dull, but they like kind of like. Super chill, and you would have yeah. to surround mm-hmm. them with some colorful characters, which what I that's what I thought the mods would be. Yeah. Well, like, I I, I kind of still feel like she's still in that same realm of Boba Fett is like kind of like laid back and like not too, you know. Ex- I don't want to not I don't want to say exciting, but you know, I, you know it's just not. There's not a lot of layers that we've gotten from her, so it kind of makes yeah. you know maybe she'll get her spinoff uh, in a couple years. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I don't understand what you're saying. She's very cool. Again, a lot of cool characters to look at, but we didn't, as Griff said many times so far, we just haven't gotten the chance to like explore them, you know, yeah. and really yeah. kind of get into their headspace. But going into the main beats here, as at this point. We see that the the crime lords and and, and the Mandalorian they, they send out the the goofy guy who I can't even think of his name right now the the uh, I can't think of the, the character's name but God. He, to me this oh. was one one of many characters him and a couple other character motto like it's the comedy beats of like kind of that that prequelized mindset of like having a, a goofy character to kind of get the kids to laugh or making the adults laugh I, the character did not work for me at all the comedic beats in this show to me were way off uh but he comes out and comes up with the essentially distracting uh the syndicate and this is where we get a little bit of cool action we see boba and the mandalorian in action we see him you know the jetpacks in action and in, in, in the Freetown folks finally come in at the last minute. Griff, how were you feeling about all this action sequences? And then we get, you know, the return of these uh, Scorpion droids coming into the mix. Yeah, the, um, the the Scorpion droids looked like they were out of Metal Gear Solid, so that was kind of funny. Um, but the, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the action was, it just, it didn't feel, I don't know. I, I like. I'll keep going back to this. It just didn't. It wasn't well shot or directed. Like, yeah, yeah. It was really cool to see Boba and Din fight together. Have that little like moment about like you know uh, honor and and like tradition and like yeah. th- this is the way. Like, it, like that was really cool. Uh, I could have done without like the the tail dude. Uh, you know, disrupting that and then going out and the stuff. It was just like it was like the one moment that should have been played really badass. They like didn't, and they just sort of like played it as a comedic beat, which is annoying. Uh, because I I think there's a lot of times where it's like they, they could go too try hard with with some of the Boba Fett stuff. It's like oh look yeah. how badass he is. Mm-hmm. That was the one moment where I was like you're you're pinned down, you're under fire. Go out like just and just attack in a blaze of glory. Like yeah. please for the love of God. Like that's what we've been building to just deliver on that. And they eventually get there, but it's just the way it's uh it, it's shot is just like it, it felt cheap. Um, yeah. is is the best way that I can describe it. Uh, and, and real quickly, going back to the the little mayor's assistant guy, the reason I hate That's him so much is because like he he just feels like a person in makeup. Like he doesn't mm-hmm. actually feel like an alien or or anyone. Yeah. even even if he was educated on Coruscant, like even those aliens on the planet spoke in their like dialects or whatever. They, it, it was just like, 
there, there's been a, I mean, yeah, there were instances like that in Mandalorian. This isn't, yeah. you know, just a, you know, uh, something that the Book of Boba Fett has been doing. But yeah, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what universe he's supposed to be in, but it's not here. And I don't like it. <laughs> it's a very similar thing to um, the comedian uh, that's, you know, Mato, who's in Mando show, who obviously made her appearance in this episode and in the previous ones. It's just I don't know what she the, sucks. I don't know what the, the, the thing <laughs> oh. is to have the modern characters, these modernized comedian beats to just to, to suck the levity out of the seriousness. Big Dog, how did you feel about that? That assistant and also just your thoughts on this sequence here of seeing Mando and uh, Boba kind of team up. Okay, first of all, I just got to completely disagree with y'all on one thing. That's it, that's, the, that's, a, uh, that's the lady that fixes it. I love a Patty her. Motto. Oh, oh, man. man. Yeah, that's I, your I, homie. I, I, so, I absolutely oh, love her. I will, that is a hill I will die on. Okay. I just, uh, just want to make sure I get that clear. Now, as far as the other guy, I think Griff hit it on the head. He looks like a guy who just in makeup, bro. And and let me <laughs> let me tell you what this this reminds me of, man. This reminds me of to me the the comedy that was in the Last Jedi. It felt like that. It felt like Marvel humor, like how how Marvel does their humor. Mm-hmm. But in a Star Wars movie or in a Star Wars series, that doesn't work. It just to me there was a there's a route you could you had to take with the book of Boba Fett and the tone and everything. This kind this guy completely took you out of that and 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 you felt it like uh, you can do it and if you just skate by it's like, all right cool whatever you yeah. get but no you it's felt out like a sore thumb yeah and yeah. Then especially yeah. especially when you like have that build up it's like okay they about to go out they about to get it in and they do. In which I enjoyed that, but like if you don't have that moment in between that, I think that that moment that that fight between uh, uh, Mando, Boba, and the uh, the Pike that 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 that's better, you know, because I actually enjoyed that fight. Now, one thing I was weirded out about, I'm like, okay, the hardest thing to hit is something flying. So why would y'all grind y'all sales? Like, okay, well, that's, that's kind of like a weird thing to do, but yeah, I mean, yeah. especially you guys are two skilled fighters, y'all should probably know that. But yeah, and yeah, the more it went on, though, the longer the fight got, it, 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 it did the droid came. I was very disappointed how they had the droids. Right? It yeah. was two. It was two droids, and <laughs> they, if they would have sent five, they could have took over the whole time to read. Yeah. It- I think That's it was so supposed true. to. I think if there's the, the design is supposed to be similar to the prequels with the uh, the, the droids in um, um, yeah episode one or whatnot. I, I actually upgraded. I I read I saw this morning that that was an unused piece of concept mm-hmm. art for a droid in Attack of the Clones. So gotcha. like gotcha, it makes sense why they would try and bring that back. Yeah, and and and, and this is where to me it's fun to look at. It's cool to look at. I just did not. Action to me without stakes is just a bunch of this loud noise yeah. on screen. Yeah. And this is what kind of hit me when I was just kind of, I, honestly, I was on my phone during this whole sequence here. I mean, I was popping in and out. The only thing that kind of caught my eye is this moment here when Grogu and uh, Din have that, you know, that uh, reunited moment. But even then it kind of felt weird because the joke when man, you know, <laughs> the Din and the joke, it's just the jokes to me just didn't work for me for some reason. Uh, it just was poorly executed and just kind of weirdly placed. But Again, just seeing Din come into the mix, taking out the droid, and and we get the the call back to the Raycor, which was cool to see in action. Even though, again, I'm saying oh, it's cool, but you know, it, it really wasn't too surprising. But is it me, Big Dog? Were you feeling the same way seeing all this action here before we get into uh, you know the big moment here with uh, Cad Bane and, and um, you know Boba? Bro, uh, they showed up, and and it was to me, it was just like, all right, cool, like. I, if, if any, if every character other than Boba Fett and Mando and, and of course Grogu would have died, I probably don't feel anything. Yeah. So, so why do I, why do I care about these people from Free Time? Once again, still the worst name ever. Why do I care? Why do I care about the mods? Why do I care about? Why do? Why would I care about any of these people being in danger? Yeah. Like anything can happen to them, and I wouldn't be bothered. They getting beat up. They are they going out to say? I'm just like I. I honestly don't care because I'm not connected to these characters 
whatsoever. Yeah. That's the biggest mistake. Don't get me wrong. Now, Boba Ryan, the rank, uh, the rank car, I thought it was awesome. Yeah, cool. yeah I love that. It's a cool yeah. moment. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I was like, yeah. I, I, ain't gonna lie, I got so just off. I, I my mind kind of drifted. Mm-hmm. I forgot all about him. Like he's gonna get reinforced. I'm like, who are you gonna get? Yeah. I'm like, I guess we'll see. He's gonna show up with somebody I ain't never seen before. Then he showed up. Danny the Trejo song. get machete. machete. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so then he showed up on right call. I'm like, oh, this this is actually cool. And yeah. the moment between Mando and Grogu, bro, I would have preferred to see Grogu show up at the very end. I, I would have preferred if that would have been like the teaser for for the next season man yeah and because, not in the middle of this fight mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah and it's mm-hmm. just so oh my hey how you doing oh, we see can do this thing going any fast now yeah, it just sucked the life out the moment yeah it's when these two you have these two solo episodes you're trying to mix it in with your plot your a plot it just griff if you wanted to step in here man your thoughts on this oh, action yeah. sequence and just seeing it all kind of play out and did it work were you excited were you kind of checking in and out your thoughts on this uh this big these big moments here i mean like i was watching it and i was like mildly amused for the most part even though it was just kind of all over the place like really unfocused no real flow to it and weird pacing like the the beats that it hit like din and boba flying and fighting together yeah. cool enough uh boba riding the rancor is obviously a lot of fun it was like mm-hmm. basically like a little a little kaiju movie there like godzilla versus kong or something in the middle of it that was kind of fun to watch um the the stuff with Din's reunion with Grogu is like again, it's another thing that it's like in theory this should be a huge moment because it was such a huge decision that Grogu had to make and Din had to swallow, you know, his own self interests on Luke's planet or whatever and do what was best for for Grogu. And so like the fact that it's just like in the middle of an action sequence and there's not there's not really a moment for that to to be felt is it's just bad it's just like okay so they're together again and they're gonna go off on an adventure and you know mandalorian season three which we all knew was gonna happen anyways but like at least give us like some at least let us like feel something when that reunion happens you know it's just super frustrating um the the other thing uh Sorry, oh, I was trying to think. There was an, there was another aspect of it that I was uh, trying to th- think that I, I didn't really. Oh yeah, the the, the whole rancor thing. So like again, yeah. this is another <clears throat> thing that I I like just like in theory, but I kept thinking the whole time like, man, would it not have been like incredible if Boba like recruited an, a legion of like Tuscan Raiders and like he led them into battle with the rancor to like fight off the pikes like that dude that would like cycle yeah. back to everything that was the, going the beginning on in the shows yeah the beginning <laughs> of the show yeah. like the fact like kind of appeal to them to the fact that it's like hey this is your land they're trying to take it over mm-hmm. let's like push Span them together. out of here right yeah. and like also with the amount of like tuscan raiders there are out there they would have had enough people to actually like i i don't know like stand a chance against them and stuff so i like yeah. I don't know, man. That's that felt like a missed opportunity, and it was like for this big climactic battle, it felt so small. It was just, just. I don't know. This was supposed to be a war. Yeah, this was. Yeah, more and of it kind was like a, on a one tussle. street. It yeah. was like on one street, and like you can do the whole like Helm's Deep thing where you're backed into like a fortress, yeah. you know? Like you could do that, which yeah. also would have made the Tuscans coming at the end like even better. But like. Mm. It, so, I, I don't know. You have to be creative with how you shoot it, and they just were. Listen, man, we're gonna Robert Rodriguez. Look, he's a very cool, creative. Uh, he's like the lesser version of Zack Snyder on a lot of levels to me because he's a very visual, d- flared director. But his substance is just lacking for me. I just think he's this episode to me just kind of quantifies his his my thoughts on him as a as a Star Wars creator. Bryce Della Howard, she should have been brought into the finale or even Dave Filoni come back. Or even John why Favreau. Did, I'm I was so about to say, surprised John didn't direct any episodes. Yeah, why did his he, favorite character? Uh, I mean like maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a good yeah. thing because like he wrote all of the scripts all, yeah. and mm-hmm. they there was clearly a scripting issue. So I don't yeah. know. But at least like he's a, a film not that Robert Rodriguez isn't a filmmaker, but at least yeah. like he's an yeah. established Star Wars filmmaker and like yeah. the stuff that he did in Mandalorian looked pretty cinematic so yeah. like 
yeah. seemed like they were they were holding out on uh, the finale here. There's definitely some some budgetary restrictions in my opinion. But wrapping up this kind of battle here, as we see the Raycor takes out the droids, and now we have the standoff between the two enemies, uh, Boba and uh, Cad Bane. Boba, no surprise, loses in a, in, a, in a gun duel. I thought for a second that maybe Boba was going to have a bit of an advantage, but no, the uh, the wisdom comes and the, and the skills come from Cat Bane, but unfortunately, he is outwitted by Boba Fett. He takes him out. He stabs him in the chest uh, and, and with his uh, staff, which, you know, Big Dog, do you think this character is dead? Again, going back to our conversation earlier, not having any context because they even mentioned that, you know, I've known you for a very long time and this, that and the other sounds cool. But, you know, again, you can say all the stuff in the world without me seeing it. You know, it doesn't really hold much weight. But do you think this character is dead? And if so, was it a waste of maybe a potential character that we could explore more in, uh, in the live action form? But if he's dead, it's one of the biggest wastes ever. I personally I personally don't think he's dead just because I don't think they would make that that bad of a decision with that weak of a death. But we just saw this this man does not hesitate to shoot. Okay. They talked before they started fight. He stood over him and tried to give a monologue, bro. That I've known this guy for probably a total of six minutes. That still didn't seem like something he would do, man. And to me, that felt out and so we had that moment with him standing over Boba Fett. I, I'm just like, okay. And then the way Boba Fett takes him out. Granted, we saw Boba Fett training with the Tuscans with this, you know, with the stick and so on yeah. and so forth. That was not meant for him, okay? That should have been meant for the leader of the Pikes because those are the people who killed the Tuscans. So I, I no, it, it just that. It, now, as reflecting with you all, I'm, I'm noticing a lot of different things that I, I personally did not notice during the episode. But this one was something that stood out to me immediately. And I was just mm-hmm. like, nah, this this didn't work. Like, I, don't, I don't feel the tension between, I, I don't know the relationship between the two. Yeah. This guy just had a dub and he just gave it up because he wanted to talk, which yeah. feels weird. And he just got killed by this stick that I felt like was meant for the pipe. No, this to me felt like seeing uh Palpatine and episode nine coming out of nowhere and you know Ray <laughs> taking taking him out, and it's just like, wait, he's been here this whole time, and we're just gonna <laughs> kill him off in this film. Obviously, there's more weight to Palpatine than Cat Bane, but it just kind of fell out of left field. Griff, you know, again, knowing that you have this, you you know of this history between the two. What is it a satisfying conclusion to see this this you know animated some of the stuff in in the books come to fruition? Did it feel like a satisfying conclusion for these two characters? Uh, no, uh, but I mean, like it, again, in theory, yeah, I should like that conflict. I think there's a lot going on there, and I. So I'm of two mindsets. I get what you're saying about like the staff should have been, he should have used that to kill the pikes. And I totally agree with that. I think that would have made a lot. It actually would have made even more sense for him to kill the pike leader instead of Fennec. But I guess they were like, it's like, it's like Fennec has to be doing something during the fight. So sure. She's going to go kill the pikes, whatever. Um, But the the reason I I didn't hate it too much was I, I, I think the whole confrontation between Cad and Boba was like Cad being like, "You're you're my Padawan, basically. You are yeah. you, you're nothing more than like a selfish or sorry, a selfish, uh, bloodthirsty killer. You have no allegiance to anyone. You're only in it for yourself, which is how Cad Bane is, and that's how he kind of like raised him. And that's sort of like yeah. the, it's the history of violence that he was brought up in uh, as a child of Jango Fett." And so I think him killing uh, Cad Bane with the staff sort of signifies like, no, I'm not what you made me to be. I am my own person with my own found family. Uh, and like, I'm going to use the, the weapon of my community, my people, my tribe to kill you. Because uh, yeah. ultimately, mm-hmm. Cad Bane has no allegiance to anyone. He, he's right. just, so again. Hire for gun, gun for yeah, hire. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. He, he's. He, oh, go ahead. But my whole thing with that is like I understand. See that that comes from like their previous relationship. But what have yeah. we seen at all that would signify that he's a, that he's a killer? 
Like we yeah. haven't seen him do nothing but try to save people thus far. So I'm like. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it, you're you're a hundred percent right, and this this kind of just goes back to the fact that like, I I like this moment for reasons outside of the series. The series, yeah. But it's like within the series, it's like very sloppily handled. So, yeah, it it doesn't it doesn't like ring as powerfully uh, as it could. You know, e e again, even yeah. someone who like. <laughs> like enjoyed seeing Cad Bane back and like liked the the meaning behind that confrontation I was just like yeah I'm I'm still not like feeling the power of this it's just like he was just brought in at the end of last week's episode and now it's just like oh it's so I'm not what you made me like whatever kill him and it's just like okay well where were you like five episodes ago you know <laughs> like Griff, big Pat Cad Bane yes it was a cool reveal for those that know the character last week but he should have been in episode one of this show to have that moment be a, a payoff absolutely uh and, and and to have that just to kind of come out of left field to me just felt like I said like empty calories and just seeing a character, cool character, menacing character, but without context, just a character that we just spent like uh, Big Dog said six minutes with, and now we're seeing him die. Which again, I don't think he's dead. They've already established with we'll talk about the mid credit scene. Is anyone ever really dead in Star Wars? You can just bring them back, and then that bath the tank, which half of the the first four episodes was Boba in the bath. So uh, yeah, we'll. we'll uh, I think we haven't seen the last of the live live action of Bane. on on the whole back the tank part. I oh, do like gosh. that they kind of like poked fun at that in the show. Where he was like, he told Chris Ant that he was just like, hey, you can you could go take a bath in my back the tank. Yeah, the bath the tank, God. man. That's that's the next uh, hot toy or the uh, you know. Uh, uh, Funko Pop yeah. toy is the bad the tank. I'm sure all the yeah. kids want that. But I don't want to neglect the, a cool moment here. Again, I think all the Grogu stuff, even though it was kind of forced, it was still kind of cool seeing whenever you see Grogu in action using the force as he's taking out the Rabcor and having a little bit of a moment with um, – you know, just using his power, just seeing how skilled and talented he's becoming. Uh, and again, I just get a kick out of just seeing <laughs> Grogu doing anything, uh, and particularly yeah. taking out something 10 times his size. But wrapping up the episode, as you guys mentioned, uh, not Boba. Not Boba. He's not there uh, getting his hands dirty. <laughs> oh, God. It's Finnick. She's take, which was pretty brutal. I'm not going to lie. The guy, the, the mayor being hung and uh, the main syndicate can be in shot. You know, she, she does the heavy lifting in this relationship as we see them talking about you know we're gonna we're gonna save these we're gonna protect these people this is our town now as we get the cool kind of you know moment of the team coming together as one now uh grogu and mando off to season three of the mandalorian uh which we'll see it hopefully by the end of this year and there was a little stinger at the end of the episode revealing that no one really dies in star wars we see that um my man uh whose name is slipping me right now um What's his name, guys? I'm, I'm slipping on my man's uh, name. Uh, Cab oh, Cat. Uh, yeah, Cobb Van. Cobb yeah. Van. Yes, Timothy yeah. uh, was great. You know, he's he's alive and he's being fixed up by uh, you know Will I Am of a Black IP. So he'll <laughs> he'll be back. <laughs> Probably Dude, in Mando. Thundercat, man. Thundercat, so, man. That was the greatest cameo. <laughs> Which was that episode four when they yeah, revealed uh, him when he fixed up Finnick? Was that four? No, I think it was five. Oh, no, because five was the man. Yeah, it was four. So it was four when we got yeah. that whole fixing of. Okay. So, guys, uh, Big Dog, your thoughts on this finale here, on this ending of the episode. And I guess the big thing is do you want to see more of, uh, of these people here, uh, of these people there, in uh, a season two of Boba Fett? <laughs> this is such a difficult question. I'm going I'm to I'm get to, I'm gonna get to the, the, the first part. I guess yeah. the, the, the Finnick. Finnick actually, because Finnick was an assassin. Finnick, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, she just the, the people we saw earlier. She's like, yeah. hey, you just paying for the name. Okay. So Finnick actually showed what an assassin is supposed to do. Granted, I still feel like, like I thought she was going to at least bring the pipe, like lead her back to Boba, and he's going to kill him with this. But nope. Finnick's like, nah, I'm not doing none of that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm taking these people out. You never saw her until the last person was dead. So I, I was like, okay, this this is kind of the show I wanted to see. But I guess, yeah. okay, or I, you know, maybe next time. Now, uh, as far as Gro I, I did like seeing Grogu. I use his power, and I, I, I feel like my boy moving a little bit quicker now. He's not hey, as a slow. Stuff. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not as slow. You feel me? So I, I like that. And here's the big one: <laughs> Do I want to see a season two? I feel like a season two actually can work. But here's the mm. thing. Mm. 
You have the characters around. Now you have to build with them. You have to make me care about them as yeah. a collection. Because if not, if it's just more of the same, I don't think it worked. And I don't, and, and, and it wasn't, is it just me? Or did it kind of feel like both was like, uh, maybe I can get somebody, somebody else can lead these people. Because that's why I think it cut to like uh, Kyle Vance. I kind of feel like he wanted to put them over to he wanted to put him over Tatooine and Boba wanted to like go do up do his own thing, which to me seems completely off because we just had this whole thing about you protecting people. Now yeah. you're gonna deal. Now you're ready to I, get, I, give it up. It's weird, but, but I, I take a season two. It's just I need I, I need to care about the group. Like I, yeah. I let me learn more about the mods and what they've gone through, Black Christian. And, and unfortunately. I want to see it in the show. I understand they probably gonna have some comics come out, some, some different little things, <laughs> anime, yeah. animation. Or yeah. Something. yeah, I, I need to see it in the show. Make me care yeah. about these characters, these actors. So yeah, I take it, but if I don't get it, I ain't sure. I see right. that. <laughs> I hear you, man. Griff, man, your thoughts on this final uh, wrapping up the episode with, again, um, Finnick taking out the, the lead of the syndicate, taking out the mayor. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they, they're they now – the streets of Tatooine seem to be safe, seem to be everyone res respecting him now. He now has the respect of the people, um, yeah. and he now has his muscle. He has his crew now. He has his family, essentially, that he's been talking about all season, but now he now has a family, I guess you can say. Do you want more of this family, and how did you think this episode wrapped up this season? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just sort of like wrapped up the way I think many of us assumed it was going to wrap up. I mean, the logical way to, I mean, the, the Fennec killing the, the crime lords, the Pike leader and all this stuff like that. I mean, cool scene really means nothing since it was Boba's battle with the Pikes, really. Yeah. So I would have, it would have felt more appropriate to have him do that. I don't know, maybe have like Fennec help take out some of the other people but then he he's the one that kills the pike leader but yeah i don't know i mean that that it's whatever there's so many things going on in this episode yeah. that are wrong yeah. it's like all whatever fennec wants to kill them sure <laughs> uh but as for like the future of this show um yes if it's truly about boba fett i mean yeah. that's really what it comes down to uh and i think now that he has this family um you know uh, I don't know. I, I I'd be curious to see what other directions they could take the character and and stuff like that. I mean, he still has like a history of violence that they could sort of tap into, um, yeah. you know, and explore in in future seasons. But the the other main thing is if if they're gonna do another season, I want to actually see more of that family dynamic. I want to I want to show yeah. I want them to yeah, show man. us like. <laughs> just like how much these people sort of mean to him how yep. like they yep. they interact as a group because you're you're both of you were so right like we didn't get we we got hardly like any of that throughout the course of this season it's like yeah the sentiment is there that he has this found family and it's great and blah 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 but it's like i want to see them as just like a group together that's mm -hmm. that's what i'm interested in so um yeah, I mean, I ultimately, I think it, that it's telling that the show ended uh, playing out the Mandalorian theme. Mando and with, season with, three. With, yeah, yeah with, with Din and Grogu, which, and it wasn't even like a post credit scene. Like, no, that was the end of the, the show, show was yeah, that. Exactly. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is where our priority priorities yeah. uh, are. And I'm just sort of like, yeah, okay, cool. But it's, this is a Boba Fett show and you've really done nothing to make me care or just like, excited about boba fett so yeah um yeah i mean do i want to see more yes if it is like strictly boba fett and maybe if they go to other planets like maybe have him interact with like some of the older clones that are still living yeah. um because obviously that's something that was in you know the prequels and yeah, it's something yeah. that i'm sure he's been dealing with as like a just someone who never felt like he fit in with that dynamic. So I, I don't know. But if you're going to do it, go to different planets. For God's sake, please get the oh, F wait. off of Tatooine. Please. Listen, man. Please. Tatooine yeah. is the home of Star Wars where everything comes out of Tatooine, which, hey, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi will be, I would imagine most of that will be on Tatooine. And I don't know if there is any... Timeline wise, I can't remember exactly when this story takes place, but is there a chance that Boba and, and any of these characters interact with uh Obi-Wan Kenobi in his series? 
No, because I because Obi Wan is like ten years after, after the end of episode three. Yeah, episode okay. three. So yeah, I, I doubt that after, happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Well, I mean, we talked about a little bit of the Mandalorian, big dog. Are you excited for the Mandalorian based on all this stuff that we got from the show, which is right now Grogu and Din are together. I don't know if Din wants to do with the armor set, which is go to the the depths of the Mandalorian, get water, and bring it back to her to get his uh, Mandalorian ship back. Is he going to do that? Is he going to be the leader of the Mandalorians? Are you excited for season three of uh, Mandalorian? Oh, definitely. I'm, yeah. Listen, Mando is the person who did need anything to be excited for his show. Hey, some That's people say Mando might have saved Star Wars after the uh, the new uh, trilogy. I, uh, I mean, I, I can see why they say that. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, don't, I mean, people. I, I mean, you get you get up for the Mandalorian, so you know. Yeah. I think that's. I think that's, and that's definitely what I'm feeling going into uh, season three, especially knowing that my boy Grogu back. And he's back. I kind of, I kind of feel like just because he's had like been around Jedi, they still have to like flirt with that idea on on like some level. Okay, I don't. Yeah. I get. I love that he's in. The, he's in the best car and everything, but I still kind of need him to like flirt with a, a lightsaber at some point. I need to see him like hopping around. It's gonna look weird. It's gonna look weird. Like Yoda. Yoda, Yoda in episode it. three. Yeah, but I, I, I still five. need to see it. Yeah, Griff, it. yeah. Griff, are you excited for Mandalorian three man based on some of the stuff that we got from this show? And uh, who's the next big cameo? Because I know a lot of people were disappointed oh, that the uh, what was it? Uh, Han Solo. Mm-hmm. People were were speculating for months that Han Solo was going to be in this show, and, and you know it's all about bringing those le- legendary legendary characters back. Yeah, Mando season three, man, does it get you excited? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, I guess because just based off of like the stuff that they were sort of exploring in this, uh, you know, season of Boba Fett and like the mission that I think Din is going on, like I I think it'll be a little bit more of a mature and character focused uh, season. Um, I I think it will. I I just really hope that it doesn't like include too many like uh, outside characters. Like I don't I don't really want to see Ahsoka in there. I don't really want to see Luke in there unless it's like. Yeah you know, Grogu feeling guilted for some reason or something like that. But I really, really want to just move away from Luke Skywalker, please, for the love of God. It's hard. It is hard for them to do. Yeah. (laughs) So especially now with this technology, the deep fake. Yeah. Oh, geez. That's scary. (laughs) But uh, I, I think if they focus on just like what it means, like like Din's sort of like religious trauma and him still like clinging on to that as like the way not quite finding that balance that like Boba has. I think that's that's the interesting way to go with with Mando season three, and it kind of looks like that's yeah. the the direction they're going to go. So keep it Mandalorian focused, and I think I'll be down with with what they're going to explore. Yeah, but I just I I don't know, man. Like I just don't trust them not to bring in like other characters from like. I, I don't know, like I, I I'm sure like Lando is gonna like show up randomly next season or something like that. And it's just gonna be like what? What's like why? Yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm as excited as I can be. Yeah I, yeah. I haven't been I haven't been the biggest fan of like the past two seasons of The Mandalorian, so I'm just sort of like eh. On the fence. I hear you, man. I'm hoping that we get a good, you know, season three. And I don't even know right now, calendar wise, we know that May twenty fifth has been the official date for Obi Wan. And or apparently is shooting season two of that already before the announcement of when season one's dropping. Uh, and then you got Mandalorian three. So, I mean, to me, we're getting more TV news and movie news these days. And I think Star Wars on TV is, is this the way? I will finish it off on that. Griff, is this the way? Is Star Wars a better told story right now than it is in movies on TV? Uh, I I don't know. That to me, there's just something magical about seeing like a Star Wars film on the big screen. I also think like a lot of these stories could be told in like a two and a half hour long format, and they're just being drawn out for yeah. entirely too long. And because Star Wars is used to like the the structure of a film, I don't think a lot of yeah. the stories 
wrap up the way that they that they necessarily should. So yeah. I understand that the future of Star Wars is probably on television and uh, looking, the, yeah. the future of all of Disney's sort of like content <laughs> yeah, is man. on Disney Plus. Yeah. But I just think that there is like a clear divide between the stuff that we're seeing in theaters and on television. And this yeah. is coming from someone who like, I, I don't like the rise of Skywalker and I, I like, I'm not crazy about Solo, but like at least... Mm they felt like movies you know like star wars is is like a it's like a cinematic franchise it's like don't cheapen yeah. it and if you're gonna do television like actually make it premium you know don't don't like make it look like power rangers or stuff like that um so i i yeah i, I don't know i i guess taika waititi is working on that star wars movie yeah uh, kevin feige's um, produced star wars movie still in the works apparently right, um, right. i don't know what the hell ryan johnson i think that's pretty much unburied at this point yeah i think that's that's dead unfortunately yeah. so because like i think he could tell a really good star wars story outside of like the confines of yeah of, skywalker, of, saga. skywalker saga yeah yeah, yeah. you know so. i agree man big dog same question for you man as far as what we've gotten i guess i should say in the disney era of star wars so far if you compare the trilogies to two shows with the mandalorian now this with the promise of ahsoka obi-wan and or um so what's the other show uh acolyte which is supposed to explore the sith the beginnings of the sith which actually really kind of fascinates yeah, that me, but that sounds good that sounds really good and i and i like the casting so far so Big dog, if you were to take, if you were, you know, um, you know, Bob Chepik and Kathleen Kennedy and Dave Filoni and Favreau, are you are you sticking with this TV route or are you trying to get back into the great uh, the, the the goodwill of the Star Wars fan and have more stories being told on the big screen? No, nah, who that? Dang, that LA, that's a tough one because I, I I'll admit some of my best movie theater experiences are watching star wars films same just, man just, yeah just how like the crowds uh, and yeah. the star wars crowds are like really really good even like as soon as the opening crowds was up like mm -hmm. those crowds are really really good but yeah. as, if, if i i i love the first two seasons of the mandalorian i like like the whole the way you travel so much and that's a lot one of the things i think i appreciate about star wars like the world building and everything like that yeah <clears throat> Other than like Boba Fett, we wish we like was on Tatooine, but at the same time, I think Episode Five and Six also showed us how much we can explore the galaxy on these like TV shows. I don't mind the TV route, and yeah. I think it gives me time as somebody who's. I think I'm the casual Star Wars fan. I've seen all mm -hmm. the movies, I watch yeah. all the shows, and stuff like same. that, but I don't think yeah. I've ever went beyond that. So for me to get like. I feel like I can get more connected with those characters mm -hmm. if I'm watching a series rather than me being introduced to just like something random in yeah. the film. Now, granted, I'm not completely off the film because I, I like I'm 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 a diehard defender. I love The Force Awakens. I I don't know, know what it is. Hey, I you love and, that movie. Yeah, that on film. Rogue One. And I'm just like, okay, those concepts. I'm like, okay, those, those are really good. But I think yeah. with what I've seen, you know, like on on the on the TV, I feel like it can work. It just you also have to have the right characters for me to like get connected. Really with. invest in. No, I, I think I'm in. I I, I hear I'm on Griff's side with the movie side of, it, and I'm on, on on Big Dog's take with. It. I think we can in the future if they could build up more of this universe on tv you can coexist on the big screen and have a a mandalorian uh movie if they ever want to go that route or grogu pop up in a in a, in a movie some way somehow or taika i know taika would have a field day with a grogu character <laughs> based <laughs> yeah. on his uh, his previous work but uh, yeah. yeah right now it looks like you know i don't know if if we didn't have tv i don't know if we would know that Bryce Ellis Howard was a fantastic filmmaker. Uh, Deborah Chow is incredible. Uh, I don't know if all these other Towns of people uh, would get the opportunity to, to tell their Star Wars story. Uh, you know, Rick Fagiuma having a great episodes and all the other people, uh, Peyton Reed having that great, you know, finale last year. So I don't know if we were if we were still on the movie route, if we would have never known that these towns of people were so great at telling a story. So I think you can coexist in both worlds. But the biggest thing is 
as Dave Filoni and John Favreau have shown us so far, even with this kind of misstep on on, on uh, Book of Boba Fett, if you have a plan, it, it can really do your works uh, as compared to the trilogy that we got uh, with episodes seven, eight, and nine. So as long as there's a plan in place, uh, movies, shows, give it to me. Just just have a plan, please, Kathleen Kennedy and the filmmakers, <laughs> and and just stick with it and don't get afraid of a, of a plan if something doesn't work out. So. <laughs> Look, man, Boca Boba Fett to me was a fun series. It had some really cool moments. Uh, it had some really interesting head scratching moments. Um, but overall, I would say it was entertaining for what it was. Nothing more than that to me. Uh, I would say maybe even mediocre at best. Griff, any final thoughts about Book of Boba Fett uh, before we wrap it up, my friend? No, man, I think you you hit the nail on the head there. It It, it was mediocre at best. I mean, like, those first four episodes, when it was hitting the highs, it was really, really impressing me. And then it just absolutely crumbled, just absolutely fell apart. So, yeah. Big dog, final word for the book of Boba Fett. I just can't help the, or I should say the, the, the diary of Boba Fett because he the just diary. had a small, small couple chapters. In there. The chapter oh, of Boba <laughs> the Fett. The chapter of Boba Fett. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I guess I, I, like, I, I enjoyed it for what it was, man. Yeah. I kind of feel like, I don't know, I, it was parts. The past stuff, I, I just never got fully connected with. I was more yeah. connected with like the stuff in the present with like the huts and all of that stuff you had to deal with. But every the, time, the man, of, oh, man, bro, so every time, hey, when he got into that bathroom tank, I, and went to sleep, I went to sleep too, man. Was, <laughs> every time he got into that bathroom tank, I was, I checked out, so also, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on a different end because I think episode five or six brought some life into yeah. the show, yeah. but did bled well with, with the me. end. Yeah. Of the, yeah, so I was just, mm. it, it is what it is, man. It was just yeah. an okay show. I watched it. I, I can say I watched it. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we all yeah. watch Boba Fett, and look. If this teaches us anything, John Favreau, I, I believe this is his favorite character growing up uh, as a kid. And after what he did with the Mandalorian and, 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 you know, with the MCU, I guess they were like, you know what, go ahead, John Favreau, you can do your Boba Fett show, uh, but make sure to put in Skywalker, make sure to bring in Boba, you know, uh, Grogu and Mandalorian, and we can give you a show. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the book of Boba Fett. Uh, so that was a fun conversation. I really appreciate Big Dog and Griffin coming in, talking about the show. Because, again, I didn't talk about it the entire show. And, and Griff, I, I I can say now, and, and Big Dog, this is the first show I've probably watched that I didn't review like on a weekly basis. And it is so refreshing to just sit down and watch a show, good or bad, and not have to worry about you know constantly you know talking about it on a week-to-week -week basis. But I'm, I'm glad we were able to talk about it as a, as a finale, as a whole, in uh, you know, Obi-Wan. Coming out in May. Hopefully, uh, we get an Obi Wan show and not Obi Wan and the others, and Obi Wan <laughs> and, and, and uh, other characters that aren't Obi Wan Kenobi. But wrapping it up, big dog man. If you want to let the fine folks at home know where they can find you, what's next on your channel, and all that good stuff, my friend. Yeah, man. Uh, I currently am editing some a couple of trailer reactions, uh, so be on the lookout for those. I actually haven't uploaded my my own personal review for this yet. Uh, I recorded it, but I'll, I'll be honest, I was pretty, I'm pretty lifeless, so I don't even know if I want to show the world that. But uh, yeah, man, follow me on Instagram, YouTube, uh, all, all social media that want to take big dog, man. I, I got a lot of stuff coming. Like I said, be on the lookout for that review for all of us. Uh, all of us are dead, and a couple of throwback films that I'm just not catching up on. Definitely, man. And also, too, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier the TikTok. This TikTok is incredible, man. He, the, the skits, the characters, he breaks down <laughs> animes, has a good time doing so, uh, not only on YouTube, but again on TikTok. He's a fantastic uh, uh, content creator, so definitely check him out there. And Griff, man, it's been a long time, man. I'm so glad I was able to talk to you about Boba Fett. Yeah, uh, hopefully, there, we got some some stuff coming up in the future, man. You know, Batman and, and uh, other true. stuff and, and other worlds of uh, DC and Marvel. And uh, hopefully, we can talk about that stuff in the future man but hey what's the next incredible breakdown uh deep dive that you have lined up for the uh fine folks at home man yeah so uh if you head on over to the film speak channel you'll be able to like catch all the video essays that i've been doing over there uh the next two are going to be one on the book of boba fett obviously i mean you've gotten a lot of my thoughts here but if you want a little bit more um you know some of the stuff that works some of the stuff that didn't work uh just i, I guess a little bit more 
concise and fleshed out than it is here, then you can uh, look forward to that on the Film Speak channel. Uh, and then also uh, a video on Uncharted, uh, you know, when that comes out. I haven't seen it yet. I have absolutely no expectations because I just... I know they're going to botch the video game so hard and I'm depressed about that, but I'm going to be covering it regardless. So you can head on over to the film speak channel. Uh, you can check that out. And if you want to like follow me personally on social media, it's at Griff Schiller on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Griff, we were talking about that off screen before we went live, me and big dog. That's my favorite video game franchise is Dude. Uncharted. Oh man. It's, it's, we talk TV, that show, that movie is a perfect TV show to me on, you know, I know it's Sony, so they don't have their own streaming service, but I would have yeah. loved to see Nathan Drake on a weekly adventure. But uh, we got Mark Wahlberg playing Mark Wahlberg, <laughs> a.k.a. Sully. Dude, we'll see, that man. is... It might surprise us. It might surprise us, man. <sighs> what <It> boardroom <laughs> came up with this? What Who's boardroom came film, up with way? this? Is it, is it Ruben uh, Fleischer, the director yeah. of Zombieland? And Venom. And Venom. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, like, what? Oh, God. It's, like, gift-wrapped to you. It's handed to you on a silver plate. It is, it is like tailor-made to be a movie ah, or a man. show and a they show. just listen man i'm fingers crossed griff i'm looking forward to the last of us on hbo later this year oh, that, yeah, that's same. the way to do it but uh we'll see yeah. man but look i can talk to these guys for hours but uh they got <laughs> things to do videos to edit content to put out to you fine folks so again uh, if you stuck in watch this live i appreciate you before you leave make sure to like share comment the same goes for the replay watchers we appreciate you all this is the way we'll catch you guys in the next video